Okay, great. Uh, so I am going to do this a little bit differently than some of the other presenters have. I'm going to blow through some slides first. Um, many of you in the SharePoint space know AppPoint. Uh, we've been around for quite some time, uh, from Tahoe to today is what we like to say. So founded back in 2001 with the first version of SharePoint. Um, very, very large uh, research and development team, very large support engineering teams. Um, and really what I want to impress upon you is uh, the level of experience we have when it comes to doing migrations. Um, so I'll talk about some specifics in the next slide. Uh, but we've been doing this for a long, long time, and what it's helped us to do is understand how customers want to conduct a migration, what they need from that migration, um, what can go wrong, and how to present it. Okay, so a lot of successes here on this slide, and uh, also, again, heavily invested in the Microsoft relationship, um, depth managed Microsoft partner, uh, two 24 by 7 support, all of our support technicians are Microsoft certified in SharePoint as well as uh, certified in DocApps. So um, real good support. So when it comes to migration, it's pretty old hat for us, right? Um, we've probably migrated more content in a single project than some folks have migrated in their history. Um, so big numbers here. And you know, I appreciate the, the, uh, the desire to make migration simple. We do definitely want to try to make the tools simple. Uh, but the reality of the situation is that sometimes things aren't simple. We have complex usage scenarios. We've got large environments. Um, and so we need to be able to go from a simple offering that meets uh, a simple use case to a very complicated offering uh, when needed. So this is what customers care about, right? Speed, reduction in downtime, the ability to discover things before they migrate it, the ability to maintain fidelity on the source content as they bring it to the destination, or if necessary, map and uh, restructure that content as it goes over. And the way we're going to do that is through some tools in our migration solutions, right? So um, the ability to inventory and discover what's going on in your source, which you might need to uh, do from a, from a mapping or a, or a um, or a restructuring perspective on the destination. Um, live, scheduled, online, offline migrations. Um, we do it all. We do full and incremental migrations. And I'll talk about another addition here to our migration uh, capabilities that's really cool, even if customers are doing a native DB attach uh, type of migration. Lots of uh, metadata filtering that you'll see in this demo. Um, and uh, full support for all workflow types. So built-in, Mintex, uh, SharePoint Designer, Visual Studio, you name it. Um, and the ability to centrally report and audit on all migration activity. This is something that uh, we get asked by a lot of our customers who have requirements around being able to audit actions that happened in the environment. Can you audit every migration action that happened? Can you know who triggered what type of migration? Where did your content go? All that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do is tell you a story here today, and I'm going to uh, move quickly through this scenario. Um, basically, we're going to do three migrations uh, in the next 10 minutes or so. We're going to migrate, migrate a, uh, what my, my model of a, of a customization in SharePoint 2007 that does not have a SharePoint 2010 equivalent, right? So this is a common uh, problem that customers find themselves in. People heavily customized 2007, and now we have to bring that over to 2010. So we're going to migrate a Fab 40 uh, site template, the call center template. We're going to migrate that into a SharePoint 2010 site, and we're first going to discover that we, uh, we're going to have this problem, and then we're going to use template mapping to solve it. We're then going to migrate a uh, site with some complex Nintec workflows over to SharePoint 2010. Um, in the process, we're going to migrate those workflows and the history of those workflows on items. We're also going to map a regular old library column into a managed metadata column on the SharePoint 2010 side. And if that wasn't enough, we'll finish up by pushing um, a filtered subset of that content that we just migrated to 2010. We're going to push a subset of that content up to Office 365. And the scenario here is that we have a partner portal on Office 365, and we want some of our knowledge base information to get pushed up as long as it's been classified as publishable. Okay, um, it's a lot of operations, so we're going to leverage a new feature in DocAv6 Service Pack 1 called the Plan Group to organize all of these activities. So here we go. All right, um, here we go. First thing we'll do is let's take a look at our 2007 uh, environment. So you can see here I've got a operations site. Um, this is a site that is based off of 
um, my uh, uh, Nintex workflow based site, right? You can see my simple uh, Nintex workflows here. One document in progress, the rest completed. If we dig down into, we can see that this is a workflow in Nintex that essentially decides whether or not to publish a document into a knowledge based library. Okay, so if I come back over here, here is the knowledge based library that the approved documents get pushed over to. So that's on my uh, 2007 side. I've also got a, another site here. This is my call center site based off the template on uh, the Fabulous 40, right? So I have some custom information, some custom web parts, right, that are not 2010 compatible. But I do want to maintain some of the fed fidelity of this process, right? I want to maintain my documents. I want to maintain some of my lists and so forth and so on. And just to prove that we're not cheating, uh, there is no AvNOC site, right? It doesn't exist yet. Um, we don't yet have any information on our operations site. Okay, I had to go ahead and create this site collection and install Nintex workflows so that we're ready to receive this Nintex workflows. And then up on Office 365, uh, notice this is an Office 365 site collection. We do not have any content. So I am going to launch up DocAv, and the first thing I'm going to do is kick off this plan group migration, and then as it's running, we'll come back through, and we will look at how we created this plan. So I'm just going to go ahead, and this is my plan group, and I'm just going to run it now, and while it's running, we'll look at all of the pre-staging steps that we took. Okay, so one of the things that we did um, was we decided that we wanted to organize these things into a plan group, right? So I'm going to show you how we went about creating all of these plans. Now I want to make sure that my job is running, so what I'll do is I'll head over to my job monitor, and you'll notice that um, all three of those jobs have kicked off, okay? So those migration jobs are in process. So what was the homework? What did we have to do? Well, the first thing we wanted to do is we wanted to get a real good idea of what was going on on our destination. So this is actually one of my SharePoint 2007 web front end servers. And this machine uh, is uh, hosting the DocAv uh, agent tool, and one of the tools in that DocAv um, uh, installation was what we call our Discover tool. So our Discover tool allows us to run the inventory and discovery on all of this potential gotcha type stuff. Okay. Uh, we can pull and find out what content was modified, pulled since the last date, what's our sizing information, so forth and so on. And what it allows me to pull is things such as this. Okay, so I get a report that comes out, and sure enough, look at this. This is my custom template, okay, report. And I can see that I'm using the call center pound zero template in this operations site. Okay, so that's a problem. I've also got some other custom elements in here as well. That's one thing my discovery tool told me. Another thing my discovery tool tells me is, uh, hey, dude, you got Nintex workflows. Okay, so in this operations shared documents library, I've got my Nintex workflows as well. So there's a lot of information that comes out of this tool. One of the things that I love about it, though, is it not only gives you all of the DocAv reports, right, it also gives you a quick way to run the native SharePoint um, pre-upgrade checker. So that's what this button here will do, and it'll generate your standard SharePoint pre-upgrade check report. Okay, so all of the information that you need. So again, this is all about inventorying beforehand. Now, based off of all of this data that I've gathered, I know there's a couple of things that I need to do in my migration. So I need to do some template mapping. I need to do some... Um, some site column mapping, because I want to, again, map into that uh, managed metadata column on the 2010 side. Okay, so there's a lot that I need to do, and let's take a look. So this is the uh, DocAv platform, DocAv 6 Service Pack 1. You can see my migration sources listed here, uh, migration for SharePoint, for Lotus Notes, for LiveLink, right, multiple sources of migration. Um, DocAv 6 platform is a Microsoft-based product, right, so it's an all-Microsoft technology stack. It's built on IIS and the Silverlight and Windows Communication Foundation. Um, also, the DocAv console can allow us to security trim what people can do in here, so I can determine 
who's allowed to get to migration, what farms are they allowed to see, so forth and so on, so I can maintain some control there as well. Okay. Um, uh, DocAv is a agent and manager. John, sorry, you have a five-minute warning here. Okay, great. Agent manager solution, but we can also do an agentless uh, operations if we need to push things up to Office 365. So let's get into our uh, control panel. Let's show some of these mappings. So here are uh, some mappings that we set up once in the control panel, then we'll be able to leverage them in all of our migration tools. So one of them that I'll show you is here the template mapping. So in this template mapping, here's the one I'm using, Fab40 template mappings. And let's take a look at uh, what this is. Essentially, I can go ahead and get a list of templates. I know the template name for my discovery tool and map it to a different template. In this case, I'm just mapping the call center template to a standard team site template. Okay? Notice I can also export these templates and then import them. So let's say I needed to do 100 template mappings or 100 user mappings. I could simply export those, those mappings to an XML file, edit the XML, or even auto-populate it, okay, from a, if, it's a, if it's a user mapping, auto-populate it from Active Directory export or something like this, right, and bring it back in very easily. I've also got, uh, let's see, column mapping. So here we go. Okay, here's my sensitivity level. So what's going on here is I have on my source, I've got a sensitivity, I've got a column called sensitivity level, and it's just a, a regular standard column for a library. And the values there were external, private, and partner. On the 2010 side, we've taken advantage of Manic Metadata. So what I'm doing is I'm mapping it into this metadata term store, and I'm mapping the individual values over to the enterprise taxonomy terms. Right? So that's what I'm doing there. Another thing I'm using in this demo is filters. So I've come in here, and I've said, uh, when we get to the stage of this migration that is an Office 365 migration, what I'm going to do is ensure that I'm only going to be bringing across content that has an approval status of yes. So I'm only bringing over content with an approval status of yes. I could filter on anything, when the document was made, who made it, what content type it was, uh, when was the last time it was modified, you name it, right? Lots and lots and lots of stuff. So let's go over and get an idea of uh, what's happening on our migration. Take a look at our job monitor. All right. Okay, looks like a couple of uh, jobs have finished. So let's pop out to SharePoint and let's see what we have. Okay, so here's my network operations center. And you can see, it looks like all of my content came across. This was my map template. Let's go over here to our 2010 site for operations. That's the one that's still in progress. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this one here. Um, so this is the one that mapped from the call center template over to 2010. Notice all of my metadata for my documents is still in place. My lists, okay, still in place. Just two minute wrap up. Sure enough, service requests, uh, none exist, but they are in place. Okay, and all of these things are continuing uh, to work as they did on the source. Let's see if we got this workflow stuff set up here. And my shared documents library is now here. If I go in and we look at workflow settings, we'll be able to see that sure enough, my Nintex simple approval moved over. Okay, my instances are here. And my sensitivity level did map. So if we go in and we take a look, sure enough, we have our mapping into a managed metadata column. Let's see if we finished the Office 365 push. Nope, didn't get there quite yet, uh, but, uh, but that was a pretty good run for, for 10 minutes. Uh, so we'll finish up with just a couple of slides here. Um, Again, uh, AvPoint has been around for a long, long time. Lots and lots of solutions across all areas of SharePoint. One of the things that I do want to give a shout out to, we've uh, heard some mention of the importance of classifying with metadata. Uh, we're very excited yesterday um, at the uh, International Association of Privacy Professionals Conference, we did launch Compliance Guardian, which is a full metadata tagging, discovery, classification, and action tool. So classifying documents with metadata, and then taking advantage of all these cool migration options that we saw today, um, pretty good solution.
So I'm going to hand Great. it back. Thank you, John.